We have some breaking news to pass along tonight. Police were called to the city's Parkside section less than an hour ago on reports of shooting. Action News reporter Brianna Gallagher joins us live from the scene at Lindenwood and Jefferson Streets with details. Brianna, what, what do we know so far? That's right, Walter. We're still working to confirm a few details and see the police is still here on scene. They're just picking up evidence markers. Now. Officers are here on scene. They've been going in and outside of this mini market here on the corner. No details yet on what led to this shooting and no arrests have been made at this time. For now, we're live in Parkside. Brianna Gallagher, Fraction News at 10 on PHL 17. Walter. Okay, Brianna, thank you. On Saturday, July 8th, 2023, at approximately 2.04 p.m., Sharif King, a 34-year-old man, was gunned down in West Philadelphia. The incident took place on the 5200 block of Jefferson Street, where officers from Philadelphia's 19th district responded to a report of a shooting. Upon arrival, police discovered King with multiple gunshot wounds across his body, indicating a violent and targeted attack. Without delay, the officers transported King to Penn Presbyterian Medical Center in their patrol vehicle in an attempt to save his life. Tragically, despite medical efforts, he was pronounced dead at the hospital shortly after his arrival. Shortly after the murder of Sharif King, members of YBC began posting tributes to their fallen member T.O., who had previously been killed by rivals from PSK, or the Parkside Killers, a gang based in the Parkside area of West Philadelphia. For those who keep up with drill culture, this sudden tribute to a fallen member usually signals that revenge has been taken. Parkside killers are known to frequent the 5200 block of West Jefferson Street and surrounding areas, which led to immediate speculation that YBC might have struck back. When the news reported that a 34-year-old man had been killed, however, people were confused, as YBC typically beefs with those aged 16 to 25. Rumors began circulating that YBC might have killed an innocent person once again. Initially, YBC members stood by their actions, asserting they had hit the intended target. But the next day, the victim was identified as 34-year-old Sharif King, who had no ties to the ongoing YBC versus PSK war. Sadly, it became clear that he was another innocent life taken in the feud. Despite King's lack of involvement in gang activity, YBC members showed no remorse, and soon they began disrespecting him in songs, referring to him as Reefy, as they continued to mock his tragic death. We get that drop, they hit his top, he got his head cracked. First you hit his leg, then when he falls, you get a head tag. On August 2nd, 2024, Kwamer Hall, known as Mir Pablo, arrived at the Philadelphia Criminal Justice Center to show support for his friend Arshad Curry. Curry was set to be sentenced for his role in the 2021 murders of Tommy Frazier or Snipe and Kalen Johnson or K3. Curry had been convicted of killing these two men, and his sentencing was a major event in the courthouse bringing more attention to the activities of the YBC, Young Bag Chasers Gang, of which both Hall and Curry were affiliated. While Hall was there for support, unaware of the looming danger, homicide detectives had already issued a warrant for his arrest in connection with the 2023 murder of Sharif King. That day, around 2 o'clock p.m., Hall, a.k.a. Mir Pablo, was implicated in the shooting death of Sharif King on the 5200 block of West Jefferson Street in the Parkside section of Philadelphia. The murder of Sharif King occurred on July 8, 2023, when Hall and at least two other men ambushed King, shooting him 15 times as he walked down the street. The attackers, masked and in hoodies, used a stolen black Acura that had been carjacked earlier that morning in North Philadelphia. The victim, King, was not affiliated with any gang, but the attackers mistakenly believed he was linked to a rival group in the area. Hours before the shooting, around 1.30 a.m., Hall and Johnson had also been involved in a carjacking where they held a woman at gunpoint, demanded her keys and phone, and then fled with her vehicle. This stolen car was used to drive to Jefferson Street, where they waited for someone matching the description of their rival to appear. When King walked by the vehicle, the men opened fire, with exiting the car and shooting King at close range. Hall, who was seated in the back of the car, also fired shots. King was rushed to the hospital, but he succumbed to his injuries shortly after. After the murder, police recovered the stolen vehicle and began to gather critical evidence. Surveillance footage and witness statements pointed to Hall and cell phone records placed men near the location of the carjacking and around the time of the murder. Additionally, an anonymous tip led investigators to connect Hall and his associates to the crime. Police also monitored Hall's Instagram activity, where he had posted videos flashing firearms in the weeks leading up to the murder. During a routine investigation in Mantua, police located Hall sitting in a parked car with a 9mm handgun under his seat 
which was later tied to the murder through ballistic testing. Hall's DNA was found on the weapon, strengthening the case against him. At the Philadelphia Criminal Justice Center, Hall's presence did not go unnoticed. Two officers who were familiar with the citywide patrol alert for his arrest recognized him in the courthouse. They immediately informed sheriff's deputies, and Hall was arrested before he could leave the building. It was a surprising turn of events, considering Hall had only come to the courthouse to support Curry, who was being sentenced for a completely unrelated crime. Hall was taken into custody on charges of murder, conspiracy, carjacking, and related crimes. Deputy Police Commissioner Frank Venore confirmed Hall's arrest and noted that Hall, along with two other YBC associates, was responsible for Sharif King's murder. Mir Pablo's arrest was just the beginning. Just three days after Mir Pablo's arrest, on August 5, 2024, Philadelphia police put out a warrant for the arrest of another key figure in YBC, Mark Johnson, better known as Yak Yola. The timing was suspicious. Mayor Pablo had just been locked up, and now Yak Yola, a close affiliate, was facing serious charges. This set off a wave of speculation within the YBC crew. On the same day as the warrant for Yak Yola's arrest, YBC Duel, aka Abdul Vix, went live on Instagram. Vix, known for his leadership in the YBC, was visibly upset. He told his followers to stop posting free Mayor Pablo on his page clearly hinting at growing doubts about Mayor Pablo's loyalty. He went rogue, Vic stated, using street slang for someone who betrays their own by cooperating with law enforcement effectively calling Mayor Pablo a rat. Stop commenting for Mayor Pablo on my page, bro. That nigga not right. That nigga went rogue. But the drama didn't stop with Duel. Yak Yola joined the live stream, adding his voice to the growing storm. It was clear he was feeling the heat. If, if we ain't in jail, I don't know what that be. Like, what you be? The nigga only been in there for two days. Oh, yeah. yeah I think it take longer than two days to do a sweep, bro. If a nigga rant, I ain't gonna lie to you. That shit what sweep they do? A nigga only be told on. What sweep they do? A nigga only be told on one person. On uh, one? They gonna be told on one person. Uh, Oh, so you ain't no sweet, ain't no sweet, bloody a nigga toad. That's all I was. You feel me? Hey man, slime. I saw like that's all I could drink. Like this shit's scared, man. Hey, what's in a way? You know it ain't really no hope when it's a member that be telling you. Feel me? Yeah, ain't really no hope. Hey, you feel me? In the midst of this, FS the Bender, another member of the YBC family, entered the live session. He wasn't quick to turn on Mayor Pablo though. With a calm but firm stance, he told the followers that until there was concrete proof that Mira Pablo had cooperated with authorities, he would not label him a rat. He's still standing tall, Da Bender declared, holding on to the idea that Mira Pablo was innocent until proven guilty of snitching. For Yak Yola, however, the timing of the arrest warrant was all the proof he needed. Mira Pablo had been arrested just days before, and now Yak Yola was being pursued by the same law enforcement officials. In his eyes, the connection was clear. Mayor Pablo had ratted, and now the dominoes were falling one by one. Yak Yola was arrested three weeks later at the airport. On November 13, 2024, the preliminary hearing for Kwame Hall, known by his rap alias Mayor Pablo, and Mark Johnson, aka Yak Yola, took place at the Philadelphia Criminal Justice Center on Wednesday, November 13, 2024. Both men are charged with the shooting death of 34 year old Sharif King, who was gunned down on July 8, 2023 in the Parkside section of West Philadelphia. The hearing revealed chilling new details, including testimonies from both the prosecution and defense, shedding light on the murder and the events leading up to it. Assistant District Attorney Robert Wainwright began the hearing by outlining the sequence of events leading to King's death. According to Wainwright, Hall, Johnson, and two other men were involved in the shooting. The day started with a carjacking, which occurred at 1.30 a.m. on July 8, 2023. The carjacking victim, a woman, was held at gunpoint at a gas station in North Philadelphia, where one of the suspects reportedly asked her, do you want to die tonight, before stealing her black Acura. Later that day, the stolen car was used in the murder of Sharif King. Around 1.30 p.m., the four men arrived on the 5200 block of Jefferson Street. They parked near a corner store and waited for someone to pass by. Wainwright said the shooters were looking for someone resembling a rival from the Parkside neighborhood, but when King passed by, they fired at him. King who had no gang affiliations, was shot 15 times, with two shooters getting out of the vehicle to fire more rounds. Johnson, who was in the driver's seat of the stolen Acura, 
reportedly got out of the car and shot King at close range, while Hall, seated in the back of the car, also fired at King. Surveillance footage from the scene was introduced as evidence, showing one of the shooters wearing distinct green and black shoes and a camouflage mask. The clothing matched items that Johnson had been seen wearing in Instagram photos. The prosecutor also referenced a voice memo from Johnson's Instagram, in which Johnson discussed the shooting, with one person questioning why an innocent man was targeted, to which Johnson replied that the murder was justified in the ongoing war between rival groups. When it was Kwamir Hall's defense attorney Max Kramer chance to speak, he responded by acknowledging that Hall was present at the scene, but claimed he was not the one who shot King. Hall reportedly told detectives after his arrest that he had been seated in the back of the car, between two other individuals. He stated that he never exited the vehicle or fired his weapon, but he did a car near his home getaway. after the shooting. However, Hall did identify Mark Johnson as the shooter in the surveillance video, a move that led to Johnson's eventual arrest. According to Detective Matthew Berkheimer, Hall's cooperation helped corroborate other evidence. Hall had already been arrested earlier in August of 2023 on illegal gun possession charges, and investigators found his DNA on a handgun that had been used in the killing. Ballistics tests later confirmed that the weapon was fired during the murder of King. Johnson's defense attorney, Doug Stern, argued that his client did not directly commit the murder, claiming that Johnson had not been positively identified at the scene. Stern pointed to the absence of direct testimony linking Johnson to the shooting, and he emphasized that Hall's statements about Johnson's involvement were based on Hall's own admission of being present at the scene. However, the prosecution maintained that there was sufficient evidence to link Johnson to the shooting, citing cell phone tower data, surveillance footage, and Instagram records. Detective Ryan Moore testified that Johnson's Instagram had multiple incriminating details, including a voice memo where he explicitly discussed the murder and justified it as part of a gang conflict. Moore also pointed out that Johnson had previously posted photos wearing clothing that matched the description of the shooter in the surveillance video. During the hearing, both defense attorneys cross-examined witnesses and detectives in an attempt to poke holes in the evidence. Hall's attorney, Max Kramer, pressed Detective Berkheimer on whether there were any other witnesses who could independently identify Hall as one of the shooters. The detective admitted that no one other than Hall had provided such an identification. However, Kramer struggled to explain the presence of Hall's DNA on the handgun used in the shooting. The most dramatic moment came when Hall himself took the stand. Under cross-examination, Hall reluctantly admitted that he had been at the scene of the shooting, but continued to assert that he was not the one who fired the fatal shots. His admission that he was in the car, combined with his prior identification of Johnson as the shooter, painted a picture of his involvement that was hard for the defense to dispute. Hall's lawyer continued to argue that Hall was merely present and that he did not participate in the shooting, despite the mounting evidence. After the hearing, Municipal Court Judge Patrick F. Dugan ruled that there was sufficient evidence to hold both Hall and Johnson on all charges, including murder, conspiracy, and illegal possession of a firearm. The case will now proceed to trial, with both men facing the possibility of life sentences if convicted. Judge Dugan remarked on the brutality of the crime, saying, This case is worse than what we depict in the wild, wild west. His comment highlighted the extreme nature of the gang-related violence that led to Sharif King's death. In a tense moment outside the courtroom, Hall's attorney expressed concerns for his client's safety, stating that Mera Pablo had already been moved to another jail for protection. He's extremely scared, and his family is too, Kramer said. He should be in a different county, but even then, we know they can still find you. Both Hall and Johnson remain incarcerated as they await trial, and their legal teams are preparing for the next phase of the case. The court hearing served as a grim reminder of the escalating violence tied to Philadelphia's drill rap scene and the YBC gang. With a growing list of young men facing murder charges, the case of Mara Pablo and Yak Yola represents another chapter in the ongoing saga of gang warfare in the city. As this case progresses, I will be sure to keep y'all updated with what's going on, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with this story.